Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones 4.0. Okay, so we're in the smithing screen right here, as you can quite clearly tell, and we are just about to create our two-handed sword that hopefully we're going to be able to use for the remainder of the series if it turns out actually kind of good. And I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get a, a good proc on the prefix or you know one of these fine you know fine weapons or a masterwork weapon or something along those lines hopefully we'll, we'll get something activated like that anyway what i'm basically doing right now is i'm attempting to make sure that the difficulty of our weapon is within our smithing skill because obviously if i were to use all tier five um you know resources to be able to craft this then I would have a difficulty of, of around 250 and I would be using 40 Thamaskeen steel to be able to craft this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create this right now. Just have a look at it and see what the stats are like. Okay, apparently the stats are all perfectly fine. You can see here we're doing 178 swing damage and it has 170 weapon reach. Let's, uh, what, what, what are we going to call it? That's the question. I have no idea what we are going to call it. So, um... Oh no. Uh, uh, what a classic. What a classic. Okay. Um, okay. What about something like this? Devastation blade. Uh, that's, that's pretty terrible, isn't it? Oh, uh, that is pretty terrible. Oh, well, whatever the case, I am actually using this, which is the ice blade. I don't know what this is from. Is that from the, um, the Night King? Is that from the Night King himself? I'm actually not entirely sure, but whatever the case, you can also create a wide variety of other things here. Um, but I personally like the look of this blade quite a bit more because it just has some very cool decorative sort of style to it. You can, of course, create a katana if you want to as well. You can create any number of other swords too, but as you can quite clearly tell, apart from Maybe this one as well. This one looks kind of nice too, as well as the long claw blade. I personally feel like the ice blade looks the best, or at least I think it looks the best personally. Um, there is also the black fire blade. If you would prefer to go for something like this, then by all means. But for me personally, I like what I've done so far, and we're just going to try it out. That's, that's the only thing that we can really do, right? You know, we can just try it out and see how it goes. Anyway, I have also done a little bit of, um, shall we say, swapping around here as well. So what I did was I now have a flying Viserion. And hopefully we're going to be able to make good use of him in the upcoming battle. There is Devastation Blade right there. Going to put that instead of our shield, as we're not really using the shield that much anyway. And if I do end up dying, then, well, that's just how things are going to have to be, isn't it? Anyway... Here we go. Um, I've also done a little bit of uh, town management in my off-screen time as well. Uh, I, I very, very scarcely did. I didn't do that much, all things considered. But, um, you know, I just wanted to do some of it anyway. And you can see here that, uh, yeah, I've, I've just topped up our reserves and everything like that and made sure that everything is working as it is intended. And otherwise, everything here is basically done. Nothing much more to do there. And now we can make our way out of here. And I actually think that maybe what would be a good idea is to actually attack the Dothraki. I, I, I don't think we should really do that, all things considered, because of the way that Daenerys is. Because obviously, she obviously, she just doesn't want to, you know. She just doesn't want to attack them for, you know, source material reasons, which is absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with that. However, you know, it's probably not a good idea for me to, uh, you know, force war against them. Um, but I am going to force war against the Dornish in a second, and we will probably be attempting in the near future to take control of House Targaryen. I don't know how that's actually going to work, because as far as I'm aware, I cannot expel the Targaryens, as you can quite clearly tell, you cannot expel a ruling clan. So I'm not sure how that's really going to work, because there aren't any votes for um you know like a vote of no confidence kind of deal you know there is nothing like that in this mod i i think it doesn't seem to be that case so that means that we are going to have an extremely difficult time of getting um getting to take control of the of the faction themselves so not sure how that's really going to work but we can basically just hope that the dornish will arrive sometime soon here and then we'll be able to do something. I have been waiting, as I say, for a little bit of time. And I'm just 
always taking a look every so often at the diplomacy screen. But you can see here, the only people that we can potentially fight against are the Mirish. Shall we actually, you know what, okay. Instead of fighting the Dornish, let's actually have a bit of a an experiment here. Because, as we know, the Mirish are not so strong. You know, no, they're not as strong as the Dornish, as you might expect. And it's probably a good idea to kind of try it out. See whether they are going to declare peace against them as fast as they would with the Dornish, because obviously Dawn are very strong right now, and, uh, you know, it's pretty likely to assume that there will be a peace agreement quite soon after. There is a caravan there, but that's not the one we want. We want a caravan that is going from... I'm just going to attack their villagers, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. No, Pentos Rebels. There's the caravan. Okay, there's the caravan that we want to talk to. Fantastic. Let's just... I want everything you've got. And we're just going to do a nice little auto-resolve here. Not going to take anything here either. And um, yeah, what's really quite funny is... We are now going to be able to level up our two-handed skill super, super fast. Or at least I hope so. Anyway, there we go. We now have 150 in leadership plus 20% morale from victories. I think that seems like a pretty decent idea. So let's go ahead and take that. And I will put another focus point into two-handed. Because I, I actually kind of want to level that up super fast. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And otherwise, we're just going to do this. I should probably go into my army screen here and actually pull a couple of extra people into my army while I have the ability to do so. Uh, Garen is quite far away, so we might as well just do that. Uh, let's do this, there we go, okay. So we have a pretty significant amount of people. Let's besiege this. This is gonna be kinda harsh. Not sure how the flying with the dragon is gonna go either, by the way. I have not gone into a battle um, with the flying version yet. So you're gonna get to see my first impression of that. Hopefully it's going to be working for me relatively well, because I've heard a, a couple of extra things about it. And what's this? Pentos is no more! Okay, so apparently Pentos has been completely eliminated. Okay, good to know. That was, um, that was quite fast, although to be fair, a number of the minor factions in Essos have been completely obliterated, pretty much, from the face of the planet, so... You know, that kind of happens. Anyway, Garen has advanced in level. That's nice to see. And we have all of our trebuchets up and running. And we should theoretically be able to destroy their walls really fast. Whoa, they're doing a number on our trebuchets. Wow. Actually, really, really significant damage coming in from their catapults. And there's a massive army right there. Which is to be expected, of course. And I can actually now go inside if we want to, which I think we will. Let's do it. We have um, almost 1,100 troops. This should, uh, you know, with a little asterisk on it, should get us the victory. But, you know, it's me. So I don't know. I don't know whether that's going to happen. Okay, let's just uh, put Salor here. And uh, it doesn't really matter who takes, who takes the other people, to be honest. I mean, these things are not gonna make that much difference okay how does this actually work because we are flying right now but how does it work because can I can I actually fly up <gasps> are you serious wait how do I oh no oh, 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 oh okay okay I could fly for a little bit it seems okay how do I aim downwards Okay, I can't aim downwards. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> How do I aim downwards? I have no idea. Oh no, that's so that's so terrible. Okay, can I actually jump up here though? That's the question. <gasps> I can. Okay, kind of. Kind of. Um, oh dear. Am I literally stuck right now? Maybe. Jump, 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 jump. Can, can you can you actually... Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to get off. Because apparently that, that was not really working too well for me. Uh, what is this weapon? 
Look at how large it is. Okay, well, that's hilarious. Okay, uh, I guess I better get out my bow, because apparently I can't actually get over there. Oh, no, please don't get me killed now. That would be absolutely terrible. But yeah, as you can quite clearly see, I'm obviously not ready for prime time in regards to using the flying dragon. Definitely not. Seems to be a little bit unwieldy for me at the moment. Obviously, using it in a siege is not really what you're supposed to do. But I'm not sure how you're supposed to actually deal damage with it in a battlefield situation. Because it doesn't feel to me like I'm able to angle my fire breath onto the ground. It seems to be much easier to use that with the uh, ground version of the dragons. So that's obviously a pretty big issue there for me personally but uh, yeah anyway let's just try and use my two-handed sword wow it's actually really nice i like this sword a great deal oh look at that oh it's so long as well look at how much damage it's able to do okay yeah i love this look at look at it look at how long it is though that's insane okay yeah we got a bunch of archers in the way as well here we might have some issues whoa okay what's actually going on with these guys they seem to all be stuck on the um, stuck on the stairs. I guess they're kind of worried about the dragon. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be so worried, fellows. I wouldn't be so worried. The dragon rider that tamed Viserion is absolutely terrible right now. So you don't have to really worry too much. I'm going to get killed now because I don't have a shield. But, you know, that's just how it goes. Are we actually going to lose this? No, I don't think so. Just going to run over here real quick. Don't get shot in the face. Don't get shot in the face. Dodge, dodge. Dodge, what, what is it? The, the five Ds? Dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. Yes. Those are the thi- Well, yes. Uh, those are the things I was about to say. But no, uh, apparently that's not really working out too well for us. Okay. Well, at least Viserion hasn't been killed yet. Which I don't think he is actually going to die. Um, but I am a bit worried about us actually losing this, potentially. Um, but this is a pretty interesting siege. Now, I think we're probably going to achieve victory, as you can see from our kill uh, kill ratios here, because you can see we've actually just killed 500. The enemy has only killed 200 of us, and we have more troops than them. So we should be fine, once again, with the little asterisk on should, because I'm not sure whether that's even going to happen. Got to be a bit careful, though. I really don't want to, you know, speed up unnecessarily and then literally you know face a defeat because that would be real bad that would be the worst thing that could possibly happen but i gotta say i'm not that big a fan of the flying dragon at the moment i will try it in a battlefield situation because obviously we don't have the full the full picture yet because as it stands Obviously, you're not really meant to use dragons in, in sieges in any way. I mean, generally you can, of course, but um, the way that the fire breath works and everything is very, very difficult for me to aim properly when it is flying. So obviously there's that. Anyway, we're just going to go and send those people in and we can obviously take prisoners if we so desire, but we have a bunch of people in my army anyway, so they might as well take whatever they want to take. And there we have it. Okay, we might as well... Should we devastate, pillage? Devastate and pillage, maybe? I mean, loyalty in Mirth is going to be reduced. I don't really want to do that. However, I need to use 87 influence to convince four non-merciful leaders of this action, which I'm not very pleased about, but I guess I will do that. Hmm, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. I just don't want to reduce our prosperity here, because look at the... What?! The prosperity of this thing is 8,000? Are you serious? Okay, wow. I, I, okay. Uh, what does the power scout... What, what, what is it in it? What is it now? What, what does the scouter say about his power level? Uh, it's over 8,000? Uh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about right here. Anyway. Wow. Okay. Very impressed by... <laughs> by these guys. And uh, the, their ability to govern, apparently. Their ability to govern is apparently unmatched. Very surprising indeed, but there you go. Anyway, we are now getting a wonderful autosave, and let's just do a nice little bit of cohesion here. Vote for the new owner. Whoever is going to be the new owner is going to be mighty happy. I'm actually hopeful maybe we can actually make 
Barristan the owner? Yeah, we can. Very good. All right, that's what we like. He is our father-in-law, of course, so we might as well, right? We might as well do a little bit of, um, you know, allyship, I guess. A little bit of that with uh, some of our people here. And otherwise, hmm, where did where did that army go? Uh, they, they attempted to take this. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. Right. So I'm going to just go straight on over to Myrrh. That doesn't really make much sense for me not to, right? So we're just going to go straight on over here. And we will attempt to take it. Did I level up my two-handed skill? Oh my! Okay, my two-handed skill leveled from, what was it, 27 all the way to 110? Okay, good to know. 3% swing speed with two-handed weapons. That's what we'll take. Uh, show of strength is usually what I go for, and I'm probably going to be doing that once again, because the 30% chance of knocking the enemy down with a heavy hit is absolutely fantastic. And then we also have Shield Breaker here. Probably going to be taking Shield Breaker. That makes more sense than anything else. And we also leveled up our charm. Double the relation gain for helping lords in battle as well as a plus one companion limit. Could be kind of useful if we end up getting Jamie Lannister, which I would very much like to do. And let's see if we can actually build our trebuchets here and not actually have them be completely destroyed. Seems like the Mirish are actually really good with their siege warfare. And they seem to be doing a pretty good job with that. So let's just wait until all of them are done. And we can vote for the new owner of that castle, but I don't really care about the castle that much. Oh, hello. Are you going to come in? Are you? Uh, mm, they might. They might decide to attack us. If they do decide to attack us, then we might have some issues on our hands. Let's see who's going to get this. I guess we'll just... Well, I'm just going to abstain, actually. This guy can just do whatever he wants to do. And I'm now kind of worried that we might indeed have a problem here. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm actually a little bit worried because these fellows have insane archers. Really, really good archers. They might decide to come in. Or maybe not. We're absolutely destroying everything right now. Vote for the new owner of... What? Did they fail? I think they failed. I think they failed to get that. I'd like to give it to Daenerys if at all possible, because if she has a fief that is closer to the front line, maybe she's more likely to get into battles. That's that's all I'm thinking of right there. So hopefully she'll actually do something. Okay, we're going to have to be um, a bit quick on this, fellows, because I only have a very small amount of influence remaining to be able to, um, you know, shore up our... Uh, <laughs> our cohesion here let's just eliminate the last of that and now i'm going to get rid of one of these trebuchets and we're just going to go straight on in i hope we're okay to actually go in here i hope so i hope we have enough strength to be able to do this because of course dragons don't really help us here so let's try it out let's see if we can win and if we don't or if we do it doesn't really matter because either way we're going to be disbanding our army and then moving on. And uh, yeah, this will be a pretty good thing for us to do. So let's actually see what happens with the dragon now. So as far as I'm aware, space takes you takes you upward, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Okay, well, I'm just going to go over here and we're just going to use our fire breath on this. There we go. Destroy the gate. That kind of makes the most sense, doesn't it? And, um, well, I'm not going to be able to do anything else, I suppose, apart from maybe go over to the walls here. The outer gate is the only thing that I'm really um, concerned with. I'm actually wondering, can I, can I jump through here? Can I fly through here? Oh, hello. If I hold it down, I can actually fly a little bit higher. <gasps> I can actually do that? Okay, hello. Okay, that was not intended. Did not mean to do that, but apparently that worked. Okay, wait a minute. What? How does this actually work? I'm just holding space and I'm going up and down? I don't understand it. I have no idea. I have no clue. No clue. I'm sorry. I can't tell you. But, um, okay. Well, I'm behind enemy lines now. I guess that kind of... Uh, pff, that's fine. You know, I guess that's fine. We're just going to leave Viserion there. <laughs> uh, just park him. Yeah, just park him over there by the, um, you know, by the KFC or whatever. <laughs> He's going to chow down. He's going to chow down while I go and kill some archers, I guess. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh my. Okay, please don't kill me, Mirish people. Please do not kill me. I, I would like to level up my two-handed skill. 
And I now have that new ability that allows me to kill enemy shields really fast. So hopeful that, that I'll be able to do exactly that. Or not, as the case may be. But I don't know whether I need to, to be honest. Ow. Yeah, this is, this is a very unwieldy sword. Let's just say that. But we are looking very cool, gotta say. I, I think it looks really cool, at least. The stylistic way that the blade swings and the ornamental arrangements on the blade itself. Very, very cool. I like that. Oh, no. Having some issues. Ah. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to jump down here, unfortunately. Definitely didn't want to do that. Uh, I don't think there's anything they can actually do to get me from here, so I can probably take out my bow now. Do a little bit of damage with that. Not going to really be able to get any kills here, though, unfortunately. But this is a good enough distraction, actually, that has now taken a lot of pressure off the front line. So that's actually good, right? And I'm still so, I'm still alive, so that's nice. <laughs> oh, I have very low expectations, as you can quite clearly tell. You know, I'm still alive. Oh, that's the best thing that can possibly happen to me, right? Yeah, great. Mm, wonderful. I mean, technically, I think uh, a slightly better thing for me to have done would be to get a weapon that is a slight bit more easier to use. Because as it stands right now, this is an insane weapon. Don't get me wrong. It's an absolutely amazing weapon and I love it. But it is extremely difficult to use in close quarters combat, as you might expect. This is a weapon that you could easily use on horseback. It has about the same length as my pole arm, hilariously enough. Maybe even a bit longer than the pole arm, which would be insane itself. But yeah, there you go. Anyway, hopefully I'll be able to get some of these guys dead and then we can hopefully help out our forces. This guy's trying to defend with that rickety shield against my amazing Valyrian steel here. I mean, I don't even know whether it's Valyrian steel, but it's an ice blade. I, I, I can only assume that it is, it, it is indeed... Um, Something maybe that the, the Night King uses or something like that. I, I have no idea. I really don't know what kinds of weapons he would use. But yeah, anyway, if I can just continue to eliminate forces here, I should be perfectly fine. Oh, there's actually a wall that's destroyed here. I'm actually wondering why we're not getting reinforcements coming through there. I should probably take out my bow, get some, uh, get some bow skill. It seems like distance really makes a huge difference nowadays with the amount of damage you can deal with the bow as well. Because it used to be that you could just deal as much damage as possible from any distance, at least as far as I remember. And now it very much determines how much damage you deal, the, uh, the distance from when you fire. Because of course the arrow is indeed going to lose power over time as it travels through the air. I mean that is of course a pretty obvious assumption to make but yeah indeed my pole arm is actually easier to use than my two-handed at the moment but it could just be that I just don't have enough skill in it so far which might very well be the case but we are absolutely murdering everything right now as well but it's cool to know that the dragon can actually get into the walls so if you're slightly better at, at you know piloting the dragon or riding the dragon then you're probably gonna have a pretty easy time of eliminating enemy forces but for me personally, I'm just so bad at it that it's not really going to work out too well. And I have a hard time actually thinking whether it's even going to work in a um, in a battle situation as well. Doesn't feel to me like that's going to be very easy. Um, it feels like it's going to be more of a detriment than anything else so I'm not sure I can only assume that as I say because I don't think these are really available that readily because uh, obviously Daenerys is using the the ground one and I would assume that if the flying ones were kind of a, a bit more ready for uh, for use because obviously the modding team is still going to be working on this stuff and I mean really we can absolutely congratulate them and applaud them for the amount of work that they have actually done on this mod to be able to include dragons. I mean, literal dragons you can ride and you can use flame breath and you, you can even fly for a, a limited time or for, a, for well, I don't even know whether it's limited really, but I'm just not very good at it. Let's just say that. Um, but you can definitely try it out if you so desire. You know, obviously the mod is free to download if you want to check it out. 
Um, someone said that it's still not available to the public, but no, no, it is actually available through the link in the description. It's available on Nexus, and I, I believe it's also available on ModDB, and uh, there you go. So you can you can check it out through there. Soren getting a triple kill right there. Ooh, nice to see that. Thank you. That is very nice. But um, yeah, as I say, it is an absolute testament to the passion and dedication of modding teams everywhere whenever a modding team does something like this because it's just, it's, it's sheer passion for the game and the source material and you can see that just from the inclusion of this. I mean, I have no idea how they were able to do something like this, to be honest, because I wouldn't have expected this in a million years. You know, I can definitely expect something like, I don't know, Lord of the Rings to have you know, cave trolls or war trolls or something like that. I mean, yeah, sure, you can probably expect them to have things like that in a Bannerlord mod. However, having something as large as a dragon with all functionality, you know, I mean, you know, obviously with the exception of... Oh, Soren's actually killing things with her, with her trebuchet. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's actually hilarious that she's getting kills with the trebuchet. Anyway, um, yeah, as I say... Because it is just so incredibly large, that's the reason why it's, it's, in my opinion, quite difficult to make that work in comparison to making a, you know, regular unit work, like how a troll might be a regular unit, you know, even though, to be fair, a troll is obviously going to be quite large as it is, but I'm just saying, for it to also have unique abilities like, you know, fire breathing and all that stuff, I actually don't want to die here, so if I could just, you know, run away here and Maybe try to flank the enemy a little bit. Maybe that would be kind of... Oh, I can't jump off there? Are you serious? Okay, there was a there was an invisible wall there. I can't believe that. Okay, well, I'm going to die. Don't, don't get me wrong. I am going to die, but it's just a matter of time when. Or maybe not. Maybe I won't die. Maybe I'm going to be okay. Oh, more enemies coming in from over here. This is actually really fun because you're able to run through the streets so incredibly freely at the moment. This is really nice because, you know, it, t it takes me back to those times where I was uh, first playing a mod by the name of Gekko Kujo. And this was obviously a mod that was back in Warband days. And um, the mod creator introduced, and this is another, another one of those times where you can basically just stand back and applaud at, you know, modding teams. And this fellow created unique sieges in Warband, which were basically you going from the front gates of the town or castle and, well, basically making your way through the streets like we're doing right now and fighting every stage of the way. And in my opinion, that was one of the first mods to do something like that, I, I believe. And um, it's just so much fun to, to be able to do that. And it just it just reminds me of that, you know. This, just us running through the streets right now just kind of reminds me of that mod and the amount of fun that I had in that. And it just gives me all that, all the wonderful nostalgia feelings. Obviously, on a very different scale, of course, because, you know, different setting and everything. But, yeah, Gekko Kujo obviously being set in feudal Japan is very different from, you know, being set in the Game of Thrones universe or World of Ice and Fire, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, I, I actually think that that's pretty pretty nice. Anyway, we are going to hopefully have a battle after the fact. I'm pretty sure we will be able to go into a field battle with the Flying Dragon, and we will try it out. I don't know how effective that's really going to be, because, you know, it's me. And uh, I, I think, it, as I say, it is not yet ready, I think, for actually being used in a wide scale um, and that's the reason why obviously Daenerys is not using one so that's the reason why I say that anyway I'm just going to speed up the rest get all of my forces to eliminate the remaining enemy units and there is Viserion once again and I can actually mount him right away if I want to oh look he's actually he's actually doing some flame stuff right here good work sir nice yes okay he's just uh He's just come out of the KFC with his chicken and now he's ready to go. Alright, there we go. Alright, we're done. 
Very nice indeed. And we are able to take prisoners if we want to, but I'm just going to let my forces take all of them. I don't really see the point in that. And we're otherwise just going to take a huge amount of loot. And we've taken all of them prison. What? There were a bunch of people prisoner in here? Really? I had no idea. Okay, so we're just going to spend a little bit of influence here as well. And we're just going to wait here for some time. It depends whether these guys are going to want to besiege us or anything like that. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. But I will attempt to get them into a battle if I can. As you can see, Barristan is over there, our father-in-law, and he is attempting to take this. Oh, actually, no, he is attempting to raid a village. That is not very useful, mister. That is not very useful at all. But, uh, yeah, I guess if he wants to do that, then there you go. Vote for the new owner. And this has 6,000 prosperity. Wow, that's actually kind of crazy. Hmm, okay, I guess this is going to go for this guy. I'm just going to abstain. I'm going to just try to save my influence as much as possible so that we can maintain our army, of course. So I'm just going to try to repair the cohesion a little bit more here. And I would like to do battle with you. I would like to do... Yes, there we go. We got into a battle with him. All right, let's do this. Okay, so we have obviously a significant amount of people in comparison to him. But we're probably going to need that because I'm going to be completely useless on the dragon. So, yeah, there you go. Anyway, we're going to be using Berserker here because a plus 20% damage bonus with two-handed weapons while you have less than half of your hit points is most likely going to be activated much more than Confidence, which is a 15% damage bonus while you have more than 90% of your hit points. In other words, don't get hit at all and you get 15% extra damage or... Well, inevitably, you're going to take damage, and then you can, you know, have a pretty decent time. So we're going to go for Berserker here. And we can also deflect projectiles with two-handed swords by blocking. I've never actually seen that work ever before, so that could be uh, pretty awesome. And we're also going to be taking Terror, I believe. I don't think I'm going to be taking Hope. I don't think I really need Hope. So we'll go for Terror. There we go. And let's do this. Let's go straight on in. And uh, even if the dragon doesn't turn out so well, I can just get off my... Get off my mount and do some massive damage with whatever. And, um, you know, with my uh, wonderful two-handed. And we're just going to put some people here. No, this guy shouldn't go there. Thank you very much. We want... Uh, who's actually going to go here, to be honest? Uh, they're all mounted. That's the problem. They're all mounted. Who, who's who's not actually mounted? I think... Uh, oh, no. Soren is definitely mounted. I think everyone's going to be mounted, maybe, except... Yeah, Varys is not mounted. Okay, that's good. And who's a good cavalry person? No one seems to be particularly good at cavalry. Grey Worm is okay. Uh, yeah, no, these guys are not so good. No, it seems like... It seems like Grey Worm is the best, so we're going to put him... He's not mounted, though. That's absolutely hilarious. What are you doing, sir? Okay, well, we're, we're just going to do this... Uh, Okay, fine. This guy's not mounted either. Okay, fine. Let's do let's do this guy then. There we go. All right. Whew. Try, trying to find some people to actually make that work. Yeah, good luck. That seems pretty difficult. All right. So we're actually fighting in the village. It's a bit weird, actually, how we are on the outside of the village and the enemy is on the inside, considering they are supposed to be the ones that are attacking the village. But I guess, you know, that's just how it is. All right. So let's see how this actually works. So I can do this while moving. Ah, I see. Oh, okay. I see how it works now. Okay. So we can actually use that while moving and we can travel over various obstacles as well. This is actually quite funny because I, um, well, I, I don't think I can actually take very much damage <laughs> because I am flying and it is a lot a lot harder for the opponent to actually deal damage to me. I can even fly over buildings. Wow, I had no idea that I could even do that. Okay, that's that's pretty significant. We're eliminating a lot of the elite archers as well. So I'm probably just going to tell my forces to charge in now. And we can do some damage here. Oh, they, yeah, okay. So I can definitely see how the flying dragon can work. Not really working so well in the sieges but that is of course to be expected and of course we are indeed taking damage once again so as i say dragons definitely not invincible but they are uh, you know i i think uh, they can be killed they can be killed obviously as you might expect we are taking some pretty significant damage from a variety of sources and because it is a, indeed a, a massive model it is going to continually get hit 
So if we can just do some more damage here, then I'll be very pleased. There we go. Yeah, I I actually really like this. I mean, that's the point, you know. It's just so it's just so funny how people are able to do this kind of stuff, and it, it, it's just it's just so impressive. It really is because you you would never think to yourself, you know. Just imagine, you know, if you're if you're a fan of Warband as well as Bannerlord, and you've been playing, you know, both games, or you've played both games, and just imagine what was it? I don't know. Let's say. Uh, I don't know, what, seven, nine, ten, maybe ten, ten years ago? Maybe something like that? Maybe maybe just think about what was what was going on in 2013. And you were playing Warband. Let's say you're playing Warband and you're playing something like a mod, like, I don't know, Prophecy of Pendor or something like that. Or you're, or you're just playing native. Maybe you're just playing native or something. And you just think to yourself, oh, wouldn't it be really cool if I could ride on something like this? If I could ride on a dragon? Or if I could, uh, you know, do whatever in that regard. And look, look at what we've, got. look at what we got right here. That is so incredibly impressive for a for a uh, project that is completely free. It's that's absolutely amazing. It really is absolutely amazing. Anyway, um, that is very sh assuredly a uh, wonderful victory for us. And I managed to kill only 149. Okay, I actually thought I would have killed a lot more than that, but yes, I actually only had 149. Very strange. I would have expected much more than that, but there you go. Anyway, so as you can see, the flying fellow does work a little bit, maybe a little bit better than the ones that are walking along the ground, but I'm not sure whether I like that that much. Mm, not sure. We're going to be letting a bunch of these guys go because I'm thinking maybe we'll try to persuade them to join us or something like that. I'm thinking maybe that would be a pretty cool thing to do. Just going to let my prisoners go to all of the people in my in my army. And uh, yeah, the only thing we need to do now to completely eliminate... Oh. I see. The Mirish are actually still having some things available. Oh no. Okay, I'm going to have to go over here and actually see what I can do. Um, but I have to be a bit careful. Hmm. There's 236 there. That should be fine. I'm hoping Dario is going to be okay in actually dealing with whoever is over there. Seems like we are actually having a pretty significant advantage. So I, I shouldn't be too... No, shouldn't be too worried about that. As you can see, he did just take it. So that's nice. And we can also do battle here as well. And... As you can see, they only have eight days worth of food remaining as well. So even if I want to, what I can do is I can just starve them out a little bit just to weaken their garrison somewhat. Let's just increase our cohesion a bit more. And it uh, really helps to have a uh, pretty massive army as well. Because the fa look, at, look at how fast we're actually constructing these trebuchets right now. It's actually crazy. Wow. Yeah. that That is actually just incredible and look at the amount of combat strength the enemy has now as well it's just it's almost a sliver it is literally almost a sliver and my trebuchets will be able to completely destroy the walls in no time as you can see and i'm kind of thinking that maybe i'm just gonna should i just wait until the uh <laughs> until their food has run out maybe i should or maybe i shouldn't it very much depends i mean i'm using all of my influence right now the other army has now left which is a little bit maybe a bit problematic but we're not looking to make peace as you can see the mirish are not actually people that seem to want to make peace which is actually remarkable considering dawn is so much more powerful but yet they don't want to uh they don't want to continue having war against us for some reason it's it's super strange i don't know the mirish uh, are obviously a lot braver huh they seem to be a lot braver i don't know anyway there we go we can now make our way up here I think I might actually just allow our, our forces just to do whatever they want to do, and they're just going to go in through the walls here. Oh, hello. Okay, I did not want to do that, actually. Oh, no. Can I, can I jump? Can I jump away from here? That is the question. Oh, no. Okay, I, I did not mean to do that. That is not what I meant to do. Okay, well, it actually doesn't matter, because I can actually continue to deal damage here. Maybe I can defend enough or long enough I can yes okay here we go nice 
get him dead. Okay, no, oh no, I'm, I'm bringing people back to me now. Oh no, this is terrible. Okay, there we go. Now I can actually run away. I can't believe I survived. Can you believe it? Oh wow. Okay, never would have expected that in a million years, but I didn't even expect them to actually attack me like that. Anyway, I'm just going to let my forces go super speed mode, and we're just going to have them capture the castle, because then the Mirish are done. And we don't have to do anything to uh, deal with them. Obviously, there's just a bunch of militia in there. So it's not going to be too difficult for us to deal with. And we're just going to allow our forces to go in there once again and finish them off. There we go. Very nice indeed. And uh, I'm not going to take any prisoners. Just as I say, just going to allow my own forces to take them. And I'll take the share of the loot. And there we have it. Okay, so that's it. The Mirish are now done or should be completely done. And we have expanded House Targaryen's influence much, much larger than uh, if we were to attack the Dornish. Because we just had the ability to continue attacking. That was the entire thing that was going on there. Because if we had the ability to continue attacking Dawn, you can best bet we would have had much better results. Anyway, that's probably going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.